Throughout World War II, the Nazi occupiers of France housed Jews and captured resistance fighters in the supposedly escape-proof Fort Montlieut prison, a 19th-century fortress in Lyon. But there was one escape. Only one. Leading that escape was André Deviny, a former French army lieutenant whose escape made him a legend in the resistance. Deviny was one of the leaders of the Resquilbert, an intelligence network that helped refugees escape occupied France, gathered intelligence for the Allies, and sabotaged German installations and material as the opportunity arose. He was betrayed by a German infiltrator and arrested April 17, 1943, taken to Lyons, and turned over to Klaus Barbie, chief of the Gestapo there. Known as the Butcher of Lyons, Barbie is believed to have personally tortured men, women, and children. Some estimates hold him directly responsible for the deaths of up to 14,000 people. Deviney was tortured for two weeks, including use of the Bainoyer, a World War II form of waterboarding, before being imprisoned in handcuffs in the 10-square-foot cell 107 at Fort Montluc. He was allowed into the courtyard for exercise one hour a day. On August 20th, he was again brought before Barbie, who told him he would be executed on August 28th. By this time, Deviney had learned to remove his handcuffs with a safety pin. He had also been able to remove three wooden slats at the bottom of his cell door using a soup spoon he ground down to a point on the cell's concrete floor. He got to the point where he could remove or replace the three slats in less than two minutes. When his death sentence was announced, he knew the time to act had come. Returning to his cell from meeting with Barbie, however, Deviney discovered he had been given a roommate. Perhaps he was a spy sent to watch him or perhaps he was what he said he was, an 18-year-old deserter from the Vichy-created French militia. In either case, he would have to be included in the escape. On August 24, a moonless night, the two men removed the cell's wood slats, slipped out of the cell, and climbed up a heavy, metal rod that operated a roof transom, exiting onto the prison's flat roof. Deviney threw a parcel containing a second grappling hook and rope over the parapet, hooked a grappling hook he was carrying, all items he had been able to make in cell 107, and climbed down the rope to a courtyard. The 18-year-old followed. Once in the courtyard, the two men could hear a sentry approaching and stepped back into the shadows. As the sentry passed, Deviney grabbed the man around the throat from behind forcing the German to the ground where he used the sentry's own bayonet to kill him. Deviney and the 18-year-old then crossed to the prison's inner wall and, using the second grappling hook and rope, climbed up and over the wall onto a covered gallery atop the prison infirmary. From there. They scaled the building's sloping roof and were able to see the outside wall and the brightly lit 15-foot roadway between the walls. The roadway was being patrolled by a sentry on a bicycle. At 3 a.m., after timing the guards around several times, Deviney tied an end of his rope to the infirmary chimney, threw the grappling hook out and over the outside wall, and launched himself hand over hand with the 18-year-old following. The two men made it, jumped down from the outside wall, and were free. Deviney and his former cellmate then separated, and Deviney eluded German search parties and dogs by spending five hours hiding in the Rhone River and along its muddy banks. He was finally able to work himself to the home of a doctor friend in the city where he was given clothes and papers and guided to Switzerland. Deviney returned to the war and was eventually awarded the Cross of the Liberation by then French President Charles de Gaulle. The resistance liberated Fort Montlieu in August 1944, almost exactly one year after Deviney's escape.